I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at a very special vocal uh, production technique, which is side chaining a reverb. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this piece of music, and I think what we're going to discover is that the amount of reverb that we've got on the vocal right now is too much. It's sounding really washy. So the temptation will be simply just to turn it down. But actually, that wash is really nice in the gaps between each vocal phrase. It's just a problem during the actual performance of the vocal itself. And the technique that we're going to be looking at is going to help us address exactly that issue. Okay, here is the track. Love ain't simple when you anymore. We have become opposite. Okay, so with this amount of reverb, and we could even add a little more just to make the experience even more washy. The problem with it, of course, is it completely obscures the vocal. It gets in the way, it makes it harder to hear what the vocalist is saying. But as I say, in the gaps between each individual phrase, that space is actually quite nice. So I've just turned the, uh, the reverb up a little more just to uh, make the problem even worse. So what I want to do is to find a way to have the reverb get louder in the gaps between phrases, but to drop right back in the gaps. Well, I could do that using volume automation. I could make my auxiliary reverb track become part of my project, and I could draw a volume line which constantly rises and falls, but that seems like a lot of hard work when actually we can come up with a process that will allow us to do this for us. So you can see that the uh, auxiliary bus that I'm using is bus 4, and you can see that Space Designer is the uh, plugin that is providing us with the reverb that we're hearing at the moment. And what I want to do is, after the reverb, I'm going to insert Logic's compressor. Now, compressors, as we know, control dynamic range. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to superimpose an audio source as a controller for the compressor. So rather than it simply responding to the reverb, we're going to ask it to respond to something else. I'm going to select the Studio FET model because what I want to do is to have access to attack and release controls. They're going to be really important in the context of this particular uh, project um, and this example. And what I'm going to do is to turn off auto gain so we're not suddenly adding lots of extra volume. Okay, so this compressor is occurring after the reverb. So of course, any changes it makes are going to affect the reverb channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route the vocal into this compressor. What that means is every time the vocal performs, the compressor will respond. And of course, what compressors do is they drop volume when they detect a signal that's making them compress. So in other words, if I set the threshold nice and low and I set the ratio nice and high, what's going to happen is that the vocal is going to trigger this particular compressor. And because the compressor is occurring after the reverb, effectively, it becomes a volume control for the reverb itself. Let's just solo the vocal, and we should be able to hear that um, very clearly. Love ain't simple when you anymore We have become opposites No love ain't simple when you anytime Battle line strong Okay, so what we can hear in that example is that the dynamics are changing. We can hear very clearly that every time the vocal performs, the compressor drops, and because, therefore, because it's after the reverb, the reverb level is changing as a result. But these settings aren't right. They're not actually achieving the result that we want. So what we need to do is to configure them a bit more carefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is to drop the threshold even more so that even more compression is applied, and I'm going to make the volume of those changes even more extreme by increasing ratio. But crucially, what I'm going to do is to change attack and release times. The moment our singer starts to sing, I want the volume to drop. So I'm making the attack time even quicker. But crucially, what I'm going to do is massively lengthen the release time. The moment, the moment she stops, the compressor closes, giving this massive extra rush of volume. And I want that to be a much more nuanced, much more subtle shape. I'm going to set this somewhere around, well, somewhere approaching two seconds or one and a half second. We'll see if that makes a difference. Love ain't simple when you 
anymore We have become opposites No love it ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, and let's put the vocal back into the track and see how that sounds now. Love it ain't simple with you anymore We have become Okay, so that's working so much better. What we've effectively got now is the clarity back in our vocal. We've lost all of that wash, but we still get the benefit of that additional space in the gaps. Now, at the moment, we've been working with the uh, reverb at quite a high level. Remember, what I can do when I finish configuring the compressor the way that I want it to is simply to turn its fader down. I'm going to turn this down sort of 3 or 4 dB just to have that effect be more subtle. That's not going to affect the compressor because, remember, the fader comes after the effect of the compressor. Love it ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No love it ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong So what we get is this really nice, much more subtle effect at a quieter volume with just this space coming in around the vocal in the gaps. So within this video, what we've done is to look at sidechain compression of reverb. And what we've done is to set up an auxiliary reverb on a vocal, and we've put a compressor after it. And what we've then done is to feed a dry vocal signal into that compressor to duck it, to make its volume duck, meaning that every time our vocalist sings, the volume of that reverb effectively responds dynamically to the original vocal meaning that only in the gaps between phrases do we suddenly get all of the space that comes with the reverb, clearing the vocal up a little bit in the context of a mix.